If all these people were formerly non-yoga practitioners, how did you reach them? Were you involved in a community outreach program? Was, was it advertising? Was it word of mouth? Because for me, that's the hardest thing is like, if, if these people have never done yoga before, what's the incentive to get them to start? How did you overcome that obstacle? I think because of our studio's original location, I think that was like, you know, in a way a boon for us because we were down in the Chinatown neighborhood, which at that point didn't really have much as far as fitness, boutique fitness, even gyms. There were very, very few six years ago when we opened. And so we didn't do any kind of paid advertising for the first basically like five years of being open, right, Chrissy? All of our brick and mortar spaces were all super organic and how they grew and you know, we did get some very generous write-ups in nice magazines that were like, try this space out, which of course helps to a degree. But I think also just the, the community feeling that was like inherently embedded in our spaces, let the word of mouth be our strongest asset as far as community growth and just getting people in the door. And like tagging on to what Chrissy said in the last question, what was interesting I think also is like, most studios, it's like the pre-work or the post-work that are the most popular classes, right? It's like people that have a nine-to-five job usually try and fit it in around their busy schedules. But especially at our Chinatown location, we always had people in the midday classes as well, which just, I think, speaks to like who was living in the neighborhood um, and who had, was interested in checking this out. And so that really, I think, also helped grow who was coming in because like Chrissy said, we had like artists that were, you know, just freelance that could come in at any time of day. We had like old people that didn't work anymore that were from the neighborhood that were just popping in for a class. And so it was really like just a beautiful organic growth that happened. I've taken some yoga and my favorite line is always a drop of water is enough to curb a stone or something like something like that. <laughs> like a drop of water a day is enough to. I'm going to use that next class I teach. Thank you. I say it all the time. Like when people are upset or like, I'll say it to my wife, if, if something's going wrong about like, you know, how just keep the action going. And she's like, that's the dumbest thing. No one believes that. And I'm like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's true, but it's, I love it. I, I did Bikram for a little while while I was living in Boston. Cause it's the only thing that makes you sweat while it's like, you know, 10 degrees outside in the winter time. Our teacher but. says every cell matters. Even your pinky toe matters. So how did you guys decide? Okay. Cause brick and mortar is a slow strategy. That's the issue with it. Like I'm a tech guy, I used to be in tech. And so brick and mortar is like, it's, it's, you're talking about decades and they just drive you crazy, but moving online, you can, you can create some repetition, you can create some videos. And so what was the idea that made you want to go online? And then what was your first step, right? Everyone thinks, oh, let's go with an app. Maybe for you guys, it might've been YouTube, but the, what was like the first thing you guys said, okay, let's try this in an online setting. I think the first thing for us was like, we had three studios and we had 80 teachers and like we had 150 people working for SkyTing. And we were like, that's not really doable to like keep going in this big way. And the first step really was people in France and London and like, how can I practice SkyTing? I can't find your methodology anywhere here. Like we love your blend of Katona yoga and vinyasa. So it really was like, how do we reach more people without going to the people physically? So we were like, instead of opening a studio in LA or Austin, which we seriously considered, we're like, let's pour our resources to trying Sky Ting TV. And our angle was to make the videos really cinematic and beautiful and design forward, just like the rest of our studio. Because a lot of online yoga things at the time were like a camera at the back of the room and like quality super low. So we were like, let's just make like 20 highly beautiful videos and launch a little online thing. So we started with 20 gorgeous videos, 2019. And then we were like, okay, we got to film these from home. Quality's going down just for COVID. Um, and kind of like did that for a few months and then got back in the studio eventually. But yeah, our goal with it was to spread these practical wellness tools and techniques that we love so much and have changed our lives more people because we know how accessible our methodology is. 